Session 10, are you ready for session 10? We're going live. We are live with our virtual trade show. What do we have for you today? Sand carving photos using Corel Draw. We have a special guest joining us today all the way from Germany. He's up late. We're going to intrude on his dinner time. But we have Matthias Stange with us from Abrasive Imaging. So we have a lot of stuff planned for you today. But I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for emailing us. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for encouraging us to continue to do training. I know a lot of you bought equipment and mask making kits, and, and this is helping you to get started. A lot of you are dusting off your sandblasters and getting back in the business because that's what we're doing. We're coming back to work. We are coming back to business. We're, we're bringing sand carving out to the industry, and we're targeting all the different industries that sand carving can do. We have weddings, monuments, we have art glass, we have awards, we have uh, personalization, spirit balls. We have all different kinds of things that you can target with your sand blaster and our photo resist film. So what are we bringing today? Corral draw half tones. Half tones, we did half tones last week, but this is part two. Half tones for last week was in Photoshop and we brought in Peter from our custom mass department and he showed us the mezzo screen in Photoshop and as well as we did a halftone image. So last week we did the wedding, the bottle the, for the wedding couple and you'll see that come up on your screen. But if you missed part one, you can see what we did and it was a great gift for the wedding industry or for really any industry that's dealing with couples or celebration. We also did a few weeks ago, we used halftone images in art glass. We brought on a glass artist who does photos in fused glass. And you can see that was our session in art glass. So that's another area that halftones or that photos can be used when it comes to um, taking your photo and engraving it into glass and stone. So there's so much you can do with halftones, but it's like, how do you get that halftone to work? How do you get it? perfect where it shows up on your glass or on your stone. So a couple key things here that we're going to target is setting up the photo. And today we're going to use a different screen called a Jarvis screen that's in Corel. And of course I had to bring on an expert and thankfully, we're so thankful that Matthias can join us today um, all the way from Germany um, with Abrasive Imaging. And he is actually our European uh, distributor and he has a lot of great information, especially when it comes to Corel, blasting on stone. He does this for a business, but he also produces his own stencils and, and does a lot of education as well. So we're really fortunate to have him with us today. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring him up um, via Zoom, and he's going to walk us through the process of setting up a screen um, in Corel. So the project for today is taking an old photo, and this is a really old photo here, and we're going to turn this in. This is actually a Jarvis screen, and we're going to blast this today um, in glass, in our black glass. And so we kind of created like a slight, like a little memorial um, for this gentleman here and taking this old photo and creating a memorial for um, his daughter that she can hang and, and have with her at her home. But let's go over photos real quick. This is actually a Jarvis screen as well. So this is something that Matthias did. Um, and we use this as a sample to show the screen. And beautiful, you see all that detail. This, ex this, is, this photo is extremely detailed and it's blasted. And that's the great thing, it looks wonderful. You have enough depth if you wanted to add a paint fill, you could. This is the Jarvis screen in the back with a half tone in the front. Now, I was speaking with him yesterday and this particular image was just done all in, in Corel Draw. So he has the, the screen in the back that's separate from the half tone in the front. So just creating a different look. Let's recap here. Last week we were showing you the half tone image. So we have this half tone, uh, the rider, we call it the rider. And this one is our Gina dog. And these are both half tones. So the dot pattern. One looks a little brighter than the other because we added a rub and buff paint to this particular photo and this one is just sandblasted. So you can get an idea of what it looks like without the paint and with a, and just with the paint. Okay, and then this was our project from last week. Our wedding bottle kind of created a, like a frame on the bottle, halftone image. We added a cream paint with 
a little bit of the timeline and the history of the couple. Just keeping it real basic, provides a great gift, something you can put on, um, on the table at a reception. And then we're using a photo, a half tone for um, an urn, so as a recognition piece here and, and just honoring um, and this gentleman here, James R. Smith, and putting this half tone here on this black urn. But today we're going to blast a photo into glass and we're going to create a plaque. And let's go ahead and bring on Matias. So I'm going to pull him up on my computer. He's waiting. Hi, Matias. Hi, Miss. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. Good. You look good. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. <laughs> ready okay. Steady go. Awesome. Now we have here, um, I believe they have your, they can pull up your screen. And I just want to make sure they can see your screen. And, uh, but with a little bit of, tell me about this Jarvis screen that you're using in Corel. Okay, the Jarvis screen we are using in Corel, or we prepare with, uh, with Corel, um, is a little bit more forgiving for starters to sand carve. So if you are preparing a photo with a Jarvis screen and you are sandblasting it later on, and you maybe lose a dot or a, a certain detail, um, your customer won't see it as, as fast as if you would work with a round halftone screen. So it's a little more so, forgiving using the Jarvis screen than a round halftone, or than, exactly. a, than the halftone with a round dot. It's much, more, it's much more forgiving. Okay. Right. Okay. So if, if you can maybe see the screen here. Let so, me see. Give me one second. They're trying to pull up the screen. Let me just see here. Okay, here we go. Do we? So here, that's a Jarvis pattern, and you see... It's, um, it's not really uniform, so it's uh, more like a, like a so-called worm raster or worm screen, worm okay. screen. And here we have the half tone. The yeah, you see, it's the same picture with the half tone dots. And this picture was made with uh, 600 DPI and 40 lines per inch dot size. So 40 so lines here, per inch, okay. Yeah, so here you can see it's like um, strings of pearls. And if you just have one little dot missing or if you lose one dot with, by sandblasting, you will definitely have a hole in your picture. So this, the customer will definitely see. So, and if you compare both screens, so you can't, it's, 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 it's both of a great quality. So I, my, right, my recommendation is if you start with sand carving photos, you should start with, with, with the Jarvis pattern or with the Jarvis screen because so, it's so much more forgiving. So when you're first starting out sandblasting photos, you're using Corel, the Jarvis screen is, is right. more um, user friendly. It also, it's also uh, depending what you want to sandblast. So if you want to sandblast, for example, glass or glasses, so glass is a very uniform medium or media. And if you are sandblasting it with a half tone, uh, the, the, the engraving or the sand carving will be really high detailed and very nice to see because the people are also used to newspaper pictures. And newspaper pictures, black and white news, newspaper pictures are also round half tone dots. So the okay. people are really used to this pattern or to this structure. And um, what I'm doing here in, in, in Europe or in Germany is I use uh, the Jarvis screen um, from Coral. I use for uh, engraving stone. So, so the because stone the stone looks, is not a great. very uniform media, right. so it's not like glass. So it's also a little bit structured. So the, it, uh, the Jarvis pattern fits much better to stone from my point of view. And right. Also, right. a lot of customers say that. And also, I've noticed with this screen that you can put it on different color stone, not just black. You, I, I believe you put on like a red color stone where it looks, yeah, it right. looks great. Correctly. So it works great. So even you can also, you can also uh, sand carve white marble, but then you have to print out uh, a positive, a photo positive, like we see here, and then you have to prepare your mask, and then you have to color infill this sand carving later with a dark color like black or brown or dark okay. gray and then you have a positive in your white marble. So let's, now can you um, walk us through this? Now I did send you this photo uh, yes. and this photo was, it's a very old photo, it's not the best photo. So I didn't give you like a high quality photo to work with so I gave you a bit of a challenge here. 
because it was yeah. a low, it's a low res image. So you can see that on the screen there of this photo here of um, Rutherford. And again, a low res photo, it's very dark in the brim of the hat and the jacket really dark. So can you walk us through how you took this photo and turned it into a Jarvis screen? Yes, for sure. And maybe later on, uh, some people are interested to get a PDF file of uh, how we made it. So they should contact you. They should contact Razors to get a PDF file, so step by step. Yes. He's very, one thing I have to say with Matthias, he's very good at his instructions. And he has his, um, he created a PDF for you um, that we will, um, you can contact us. We'll put it up on our website so you can have access to this um, instructional that he created. So thank you very much for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. So um, I would like to, to start at first. When you start Coral Draw the first time, you will see such a welcome screen. Yeah? Yes. And you can see, get started, the workspace, what new learning. So they have also, they do a lot of classes and online tutorials. And um, here you have different buttons, like here, file. Here you can create a new document. So I like Coral because everything is on one place. You can start one document, you could put um, vectorized graphics in it, you can put your photos in it. Right. So everything is placed in one document and you can work in this document on your photos. Um, Very that's nice. pretty good yes. compared to other Make it easy. softwares. So here we have the possibility to create a new file by clicking on file and new, or here at the welcome screen, we have also this plus sign to create a new document. So there are different ways. So at first you will create such a pop-up window by clicking on new document. In general, you can give a name on it. Yes. You can uh, add number of pages if you want to make your printing catalog or whatever. That's also possible to, uh, to, to do with this uh, Coral. And here the page size. I chose legal for you. Usually here in Europe, we uh, choose A4 or A3. Right, um, mm -hmm. but we have the legal size sheets. Mm -hmm. Here you can change also if, if some of you, um, because we are selling worldwide, so we can change from inches to millimeters to picas or whatever to pixel. Right. So everything, uh, we can we can change the document sizes and the scaling to to anything we need. So here it's legal. It's eight point five inches. Height is fourteen inches, and the orientation is portrait and not landscape. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So that's our setting. Then we click OK. So then we have to import the file at first. So you sent me a picture and I saved it on my computer. So what we do now is to import the file. Okay. So here you see file import. So, and then we go to our, or to the place where we saved the picture. So here we have uh, Captain Rutherford. Yes. So that's the original file. And then you can see here something like uh, a little frame. That's for placing. And with the left mouse click, you can place it. Okay. And here, it's a pretty good thing. Here you have your legal sized letter and here you have your picture. So you can directly see that you can print it directly on your inkjet media. So it's the right size. And here in this little window, you can see the height. You ask me to size it to 4.5 inches, so you just can correct it here. You only have to pay attention that this log ratio is closed. So if you change the height, you also change the width just to, so it's to proportioned. have uh, the right proportion. Right? Okay. So by entering or just clicking on enter, you have sized it to 4.5. So that's your picture and now we just at first there are so many different programs like photoshop or whatever gimp or whatever the people are using to prepare the photo they should keep or they should stay with it so if you're used to uh, work on your photo with a certain software do that save it as a gp uh, as a jpeg and then you can import it in coral if okay. you're used to other software so you can import tiff files jpeg png whatever yeah so Good. it doesn't matter Good information, thank you. Yeah, and um, then if you, if you set it here, the file, or you imported the file, the first is 
um, you have to um, say how fine the Java dot should be. So you have to click on here. You see there is a menu list, bitmaps. That's the most important point here. Right. Bitmaps. And now we convert this JPEG, PNG, TIFF file, or whatever, a scan file, we convert it to a bitmap with a certain resolution. And here we uh, see the resolution of 130. So uh, mostly when we are using SR3000, we want to have a high detail image. Yes. So we choose something between 120 and 140 DPI. Some people are also working with 160 and whatever. Okay. So, but they are more or less working with the material since years, so they are used to it. Right. And uh, so, if you start with it, please just take 130, and then you're safe. Okay. Yeah? Yes. <clears throat> the higher what the I number, the higher the number, the the higher the the resolution. Correct. The higher the resolution is, the smaller the Java dots will be. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So color mode. Mm -hmm. I change it mostly into grayscale, just because then I can see directly the areas which are too dark and which are too light, just to limit the tone curve, which I will show you also. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay, 130 dpi, grayscale, that's important. Just anti-aliasing, no transparent background, that's also important too. If there is a, a just a, if, it, if, if it's marked, remove the mark from here, just anti-aliasing. Okay. So now you have here a grayscale picture. I just make it a little bit so I scroll it in. So now we, um, we uh, made the size. We uh, converted it into uh, a 130 DPI grayscale picture. Yes. And now we can directly start with uh, converting it into bitmap, into black and white with Jarvis. Okay. So again, we click here on bitmap. You see it's the most important button. Yes in your menu, so here, bitmap, mode, black and white. So you and go, we I just want to make sure we go for grayscale and then we move into black and white. What, right, Okay. exactly. So here, um, usually um, when you start the first time, the pop-up starts with line art. You see here are very, uh, uh, some more conversion methods like line art, order, Java, Stucky, Halftone, you can also um, uh, make your halftone pictures in Corel. So you have, uh, uh, you have uh, several yeah, screen types, but here we are talking about Javas. So and here you have the intensity button, or you can level the intensity. Here you can add just dots, you see? Yes. The higher the number, the more dots you will have. So here we have a, l a lot of white areas, in the in in the picture and a lot of dark areas so they will not be yeah spotted so or screened so you just have a black area and a white area and in your sand carving it it will look flat so the picture will have no depth so you just have to increase the number of dots it's pretty easy so with this picture we also don't have to work on the tone curve yeah right right cuz usually um, if it's really dark you want to brighten it up yeah, you know, right. and, and using in Photoshop and to print it out if you don't have like a RIP software. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can you can also what you what what I want to show you is that with the intensity you can also um, uh, you can also um, screen areas which would be too flat or too black or too white if you would use a half tone screen. So with the Java screen you can add dots manually. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show. That's, that's amazing. Very simple with yeah. the click. Yeah, right. <laughs> and if you decide, you can also scroll in to see the details a little bit better, what you did. If you say, oh, no, it's too, um, because you, the more dots you have, the less contrast you will have. You can, you can increase uh, the contrast by reducing the dots, but it's a matter of taste. Yeah? Yes. So each artist will have a different... Uh, point of view or different taste so they can do whatever they want. So I, I, I like this tool a lot. So if you're finished, if you say, okay, that's it, that's what I like, you just have to click okay. Okay. Yeah? Yes. So if you would have a white marble, for example, you would print this, expose it to SR3000, 
then you will have a negative mask, a negative sandblasting. But if you are color infilling with black, you will have exactly this, this sand carving color infilled on your white marble. Yeah? yeah. But mostly we're working on black granite, like India black, or we are working on glass. So um, we have to change this picture into a negative. Yes, so I'm to familiar change with that. the picture into a negative, it's very easy because here we have also the the button effects here in the in the upper menu. So you just click on effects, on transform, and invert colors. That's it. That's your negative. And that's your negative. That so let's let's recap re re um, cap here. If you have a white marble stone, you're going to print it out as a positive. When you convert your stencil, when you expose it and you wash it out, that becomes a negative that you're blasting, your mass becomes a negative. So you, that's only for white stone, in a sense. And then if you are blasting on glass or granite, you're going to print it out as a negative. When you produce your stencil, it will become a positive, and that's what, whatever your mask is, is what your image will be on your stone. This looks almost too easy. Because yeah, when, when, I, when I look at some of your stonework, it looks like you've put a lot of work. And I know you do kind of, you know, you have this and you have it down and you know you have the eye for well, how many dots to add and the, the DPI because you're very good at this and your work shows it. So seeing this, it looks like something that I could do, which I haven't done this screen before, worked in Corel, but this looks like I could do it. What do, you, what do you think, guys? Do you think that you guys can, can work on this and kind of branch out a little bit and do a, a Jarvis screen? Can you hang with me one second, Matthias? I want to see if we have questions for you. Okay? Sure. All right, so bear with me just a moment. So we're going to keep them up just a little bit longer. Um, hi, Jim. Hi, Ron and Gail. Bill, nice, good, it's good to see your name on the chat window here. Paul, how are you doing? Um, we have Randy and Sally from Temecula <laughs> and April. Thank you guys for joining us today. So let's see. We have um, Corel. Let us know if you have any questions when it comes to Corel and doing photos. It's not something that I have a lot of experience in. So that's why we bring in somebody that has experience in this. So we're bringing education to you. So this is for you guys. You know, and, and this is what, what we want to do. And you let us know on your questions for uh, Matthias right now and we're gonna we printed this artwork and we printed it and we made a stencil but i'm going to take this stencil and we're going to um, make a mask of it but let's see if he has anything else for us on this um, particular photo all right matthias so was there anything else that you wanted to show us on this particular photo no, but if the people uh, will have uh, some questions, how to remove a background with Coral Draw, how to fix or how to repair a photo, we have also manuals for that. Okay. So if, if they're interested in working with Coral, you can use any Coral version, um, starting with uh, version 13, so X3. Okay, so version 13. The actual version. So this is uh, the same screen, the same design of, uh, of software. And therefore, we prepared also um, exact manuals, how to remove backgrounds, how to retouche, how to um, repair a picture if there are marks in it or if there are spots in it. So if the people are interested in, we are ready to help. Okay. And you, you make stencils for your customers, right? You yes, produce? I do. I do a lot of um, uh, stencils daily. So I make the layout. I make the design. I prepare also... Um, really bad pictures, so yours was not the worst. So thank you, Liz. <laughs> You're and, welcome. Uh, so okay. um, that's, that's what I'm doing daily. It's not just that I'm selling your film or your material or your machines. I'm, I'm daily working with the stuff, and I'm happy with it. It must really be a happy. good film. It's a good <laughs> film? <laughs> it's the best. It's the best, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we, I thank you for staying up. And I know that we cut into probably dinner time or, or almost bedtime here. So we appreciate yeah. you you staying with us. And, and it's our morning, but, but thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, we, we really appreciate you. And 
Okay, big hug to Nicholas, <laughs> his son. He has that. a son. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you guys for, for helping out. So if you guys have mm -hmm. questions for Matias, shoot them over. And I'm getting a little, give me one second. I'm getting, a, um, someone's waving at me that we have some questions here. Okay, so we have here, is there a comparison to Jarvis to the mezzo from last week? That's a good question. Hi, Craig. So um, let's see here. Now, Matthias, did you see the session last week where we used a mezzo screen in Photoshop? Yes. How do you think that compares to the Jarvis screen? Oh, there are similar um, screens, but uh, the mezzo is a little bit more detailed, like a really high detail Jarvis pattern. So um, you can work a little bit with the contrast. You can achieve nearly the same result. Not the same, but nearly the same result with the Coral Draw. Yes. Okay. Okay. So without buying special software. Right. Now, can you use this Jarvis screen for in Photoshop? Is it available or is it only available in Corel? There is also one tool, where, um, the same place where you can uh, um, prepare a halftone screen. There is also an option to, to have a similar screen like Jarvis. It's not the same. It's not the same detail, so I'm not that happy with it. Okay. But there is also something like or similar screen like Jarvis. Yes. Now, let me ask you this question. Um, when it comes to RIP software, uh, do you use RIP software when you're printing your photos? Oh, yes, I do. So if I do um, really, really um, high resolution uh, um, engravings on glass for monumentals, for example, I made a big monument uh, uh, three weeks ago, and therefore I had to, to use RIP software because the halftone dots are much sharper, sharper etched. Uh, it's, uh, the, the image is much more clear like if you're using a, a bitmap made half tone. Okay, so, so using made half, -tone half tones. Uh, consists still of, of pixels and okay. the RIP software make really sharp round edges or sharp sharp dots. Now, did you use a RIP software to print a Jarvis screen on this? No, no. Um, it's, it's not needed. You can, you can, you can print. Um, I made uh, one glass sample for you with the kitty cat and the line in the yes. background. So the line was prepared at first with Jarvis. And on the Jarvis, I uh, placed uh, just a grayscale um, kitten and printed it via uh, the, the RIP software. So the grayscale pictures was ripped. So okay. that was screened with halftone. But if you print a Jarvis black and white screen through RIP software, nothing will happen. So, so it stays you don't the need same. to have RIP software from printing no. the, the Jarvis. But it does help with the halftones. Right. If you prepare a photo just with Jarvis, it's ready to print and ready to send calf. Okay. All right. That's really good information. So thank you. And um, I will forward questions that come and we'll, we'll get you um, connected so you can help me answer these questions as they come up. Yes. Well, thank for you, sure. Matthias, and uh, big hugs to your family. Thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. We really appreciate your work here. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Okay. All right. So as you think of questions, send them over and we will answer them. Um, again, he's from Germany, so 5,000 5, uh, miles away, and um, we apologize for Facebook not working. If you, I've been notified that Facebook had, we had some issues with it, so we apologize that's not working. We will get it up and running, uh, and we'll get that video posted to Facebook. So let's talk about our project for today. I'm using this glass plaque that I have here that we've used for the Gina dog and the rider. From, this is from our Edge catalog from Crystal um, by Design, and you can find this on our website. And you can see that it has a beveled edge. This is just glass. It has a little stand, so you can stand it. Um, you can stand it either direction, or you can hang it up. So it has a little hang where you can, a little um, tie where you can hang it. I'm using SR3000 today, three mil, because of the detail. And this was pre-made, so I pre-washed this stencil, and we put cover paper or backing paper, and it has that sticky side here. So we are going to apply this stencil um, to our glass surface, and I'm going to clean this. So let me get some glass cleaner, and I'll grab my towel right over here, and let's see here. We got, let me see here, clean this up. 
We're going to remove this cover liner. And then what I like to do is kind of pinch the corner here just to kind of separate that pull tab, if you can see that. And sometimes it doesn't happen that quick. And so we're going to apply this to our glass. And the great thing about self-stick is I put some pressure down, but I can peel this up and reposition it as many times as I need to. Now we have the border that's supposed to help us line up on the beveled edge to kind of create a straight line or to apply this straight. And so I'm going to use my border, my line to line up on the beveled edge. Okay, so now I'm going to take my squeegee and I'm going to apply pressure here. I'm going to squeegee this mass down. This is the important part, guys. So many times when I teach classes, I see people, they're squeegeeing and they're just kind of rubbing it. You need to apply pressure. You need to get, kind of work out your arm. You need to get some exercise here. All right. Then this is probably a little more of the challenging part of removing a, the clear liner on a larger um, mask here. Now, when you have a smaller area, it's a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Let's move it this way so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to kind of flip and separate this clear liner on the edge. There we go. Just going to squeeze you one more time. Now, it's self-stick. There's no layer of adhesive. So what happens is when you start to peel this away, sometimes that mask may lift up a little bit. And that's OK, because it's you want to make sure it's secure. So if it does lift up, you can put your liner back over, and then you can re-squeegee. But it's repositionable. And so you can reposition it as many times as you need to without ruining your mask. OK, so now we have our mask laid down. I'm going to take a wire wheel, and I'm just going to roll over the text here. And then I'm going to take a the rubber roller. I'm really starting to like this little rubber roller, especially if you have a negative area or you have an area that has um, a lot of um, sandblasted area. You take the rubber roller, and it helps press that mask further to your um, glass. So I'm going to take some tape. Now, you want to make sure when you're taping this that you cover your alignment line. I'm using painter's tape today, just using a low tack tape because we are not doing heavy blasting. We're just going to blast enough to get a surface etch. We're using three mil. We have a half tone. We're creating like a memorial plaque, a home remembrance piece in a sense here um, for this particular project. So before I blast this, I want to make the stencil. So I want to show you how I would wash out the stencil on this screen. So I'm going to come over here to our exposure area. And I have my, my mask here. So this is our negative image. We, lay, we did a little layout here. We put, um, you have some information on him. Um, his date, nice, his name nice and big. He's the United States Air Force, where he served. Um, and then he eventually retired from the Pentagon. So let's go ahead and take our SR3000 masking material here. All right, shiny side against the exposure bed. Now, if you noticed, I'm using the Luminex today because it's a half or because it's a photo and I want to get really good compression. I want the vacuum table. So we're going to place the ink side down. You can see the textured screen here. We're going to place that down. And then we're going to hit the vacuum. Now, to speed up the process, I can use my little squeegee just to kind of make sure there's no air in between there and just kind of speed up that vacuum process, bring the table down. And then six seconds, we're just going to expose. That's it. Quick exposure, and I have a vacuum compression. That's what's key here when you're dealing with detail is to have the vacuum compression. Now, the other day, I was exposing some long masks, and I ended up coming up over the table here, 
and that was a big no-no. I had part of it that didn't compress well. So you want to keep within your exposure table. Let me grab my mask material, and we're going to wash this out. I'm going to place the shiny side on my board. Now, if you're new to, and you just got your mask making kit, you want to set up your whiteboard, and then you're going to place your, wa your exposed sheet on the board. And then you're going to take your washout hose. And here we have the garden hose fittings that will fit. But we do receive this white adapter. And then if you're, you can um, attach this adapter to your faucet, and then that would, should connect. There's a couple different ways to use that adapter, but you want to make sure that you connect it. Okay, and then I'm going to use my hand sprayer here. I'm going to turn this on. You can see I have a fan spray. I have about, about one to two inches from the stencil. And you can wash this out on your automatic washout system as well. You're just going to set your timer for 3 mil. All right, here we go. Starting to see this image appear. And you want nice, slow strokes. Now, I've answered some tech support questions, and you can tell some people stop here. You need to keep going. Even though you can see the image, it's, there's a blue residue. It's not completely washed out. So you want to make sure that you continue to wash until the image looks white against the board. And now you can see that brightness start to that contrast start to shine through here. Let's kind of target inside this area and the jacket. That's the dark area. And let's go ahead and stop here. I'm going to pull this off. And then you never want to, don't leave your mask on your washout board. You want to remove it right away and then uh, let it hang, or you can um, you can put it on a table to dry. But you can get a good look at that photo. Hopefully, you can. And you can see there's a little bit of a texture in the background. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to let this dry, and then we're going to kind of come over here to our area, and we are going to blast our project. But let's get a look here. We got Gilly. How are you doing, Gilly? from Dallas, Texas. So it's good, good to have you with us today. And then we have um, Napa, Napa Valley with us today. So this is great. Thank you for joining us. We have, I think it's Rob from Chicago. And let's look here. So we have our mask here. I see a little bit of an air bubble right in here on this border. I'm just gonna kinda use my wire wheel and then we're just gonna sandblast this. Okay, so I'm going to grab my glove. I'm just going to use one glove here. And the reason why is because I don't want to ruin my nails. I'm trying to save a manicure here. All right, here we go. So I'm going to place my plaque with my photo in the sandblast system. I'm using a 332nd nozzle. I'm going to turn this on. We're going to be about 30 pounds of pressure. That's where I want to be is 30 pounds of pressure when we're, when we're blasting a photo. I'm using 150 grit. You're going to notice that my nozzle is going to be about four to five inches from the plaque. Okay. Okay, here we go. So this screen looks a little different than what I'm used to. I'm used to a halftone image. So I'm used to looking for the dots. But I love the way this screen looks on stone especially. It looks great. 
We're gonna make the border a little deeper than the actual photo. And then I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in the brim of his hat, just because that's a very dark area. Just trying to maintain a little bit of distance here. All right, now let's target his name. And you can just see that membrane blast right away. Sandblasting is the fastest part. Once this membrane is gone, your image is blasted. It's etched in the design. All we're doing now is just going for some depth. So let's make this emblem a little deeper. And then we're just gonna kind of focus on his name again a couple times. just to get some depth in here. Now let's take a look at his image in the light. You can kind of see the, the depth that I have on, on the photo and a little bit of depth here on the text. Now we can go deeper. If we wanted to, you can spend a little bit of a time, um, in, oh, a few more passes going over the emblem and the text to make it deeper. But we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna use my air gun we go and then we're going to clean this up so I'm just going to kind of remove this mask now this is the great thing about using self stick is how easy this mask comes up look at that that is pretty good saves you a lot of time when you're cleaning up and you have a larger area that you're blasting, you want to make sure that you have, um, that you're able to clean up quickly. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this with a little bit more glass cleaner, and then I'm going to grab a razor. And because it's glass, I'm going to use a plastic razor, just kind of clean this up. Now, I don't know if you heard, but when you can use, when you're using a Jarvis screen, it looks great on different color stone. And if you're doing any type of um, stonework or etching on stone, photos on stone, usually people are limited to black because the photo looks best um, on a black uh, stone. But when you use a different screen, now you've just opened up some options of a different color stone. Okay, so this doesn't look so bright. We need to dry it. I'm just going to take my hair dryer real quick. And Okay, so how does that look? That looks actually pretty good. And you have your, your screen here, the Jarvis screen. We have an emblem. We have black glass, and I think this just looks really nice. Second thing that we can do to this is we can add some rub and buff. Now, as you know, I'm not a huge fan of rub and buff, but you can use, use this to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit on this napkin here. And we're going to kind of get it into this area. I'm just using a, a towel. And we're just going to kind of work it in the photo a little bit here. And then you can just spend some time rubbing it, kind of making sure it's in the engraved area. But it definitely does help to try to brighten up your area or your text, anything like that. And I like using rub and buff like on photos. You can use it on 
just black glass or clear glass if you have a photo. It does help brighten up that image. But when you're dealing with rub and buff like on glass, it doesn't last that long if they're washing it. So you just need to be careful um, when you're selling items that are painted with rub and buff just to make sure that you know how long that's going to last on that, on that glass. So you can kind of see the difference here. I purposely did not do the whole text at the bottom just to get you an, just to give you an idea of what this looks like. So you can see rub and buff, rub and buff, hardly any, especially down here. So it has a little bit of a contrast where it does brighten up the image, brightens up the text a little bit. Using I'm using silver rub and buff here. And you just put a little bit on a napkin, rub it in. You want to make sure you have a soft cloth when you're using uh, rub and buff especially on black glass. OK, so that was your image. That's what um, we brought to you today is using Corel in um, using a Jarvis screen. But you can also use a halftone image. So you have the Jarvis and you have the halftone image. The halftone is a dot pattern in Corel. And then last week, we did Photoshop. We did the halftone image as well as the meso screen. So you have. You have options. No matter what graphic program that you're using, you have options. Um, so I just wanted to make sure um, that you we kind of covered both areas. And I'm looking at the screen here. We have some, some questions here. Um, Jim's commenting on the rubber roller. Definitely helps your thumbs, because these are, these are like, these have been my um, squeegees for uh, many years, but the rubber roller does help compress that mask a little further um, to that surface. And then we have, um, we have Candice as well. So thanks for joining us, Candice. And you just let us know as questions come in. We're happy to answer them. So let's real quick, let me just need to say thank you to our production crew, because we do have a crew that puts this together. You see me, you see April, you see whatever guest speaker we have coming on, but we have cameramen, we have, um, we have like Billy, we have Daniel, we have Greg, we have Monica, we have Victoria, we have Luis monitoring um, and helping answering questions and on Facebook. So there's a lot of people that come together to provide these sessions for you. And we're really thankful that we, we have the opportunity to still do it um, at this time. So Keep watching, keep sharing. Um, make sure you subscribe to YouTube, our sand carving channel. And um, we just thank you for being our customers. We, we really thank you. We are family owned and operated. And our customers mean so much to us. That's why we provide this training. That's why we bring training to your home, to your office. We, you, we really um, care about you. And our owner cares about you. So we just thank you, because we couldn't do this if we didn't have you. So this is why we do it, is for you. And so I'm looking here. We have um, Barbara. Great. Thanks for joining us, Barbara. And um, let's, let's just talk about our sand blaster real quick here. We still have a few minutes that I'm able to go over this. Um, this is our 2034. I know a lot of you have this. You have your dual doors. You have your regulator. But let's talk about what months we're heading into. It's summertime, OK? What does that mean? It's you're, you're blasting a lot, OK? And it's getting hot. Humid, you have humid weather that's, that's coming upon us. And that means moisture in your air compressor. So we need to drain our air compressors, especially when you're doing a lot of blasting. You've got to drain your air compressors. So sometimes I have some customers that are draining them every day, every two days. If you get any moisture in your line, so I'll hear this sometimes. They're saying, Liz, I step on the pedal, and I have moisture that pops out. OK. This is where you need to kind of take a look at your, you need to drain your air compressor, but remove this side nut, okay, this filter, remove that, and check to see if there's any moisture in there. If you have moisture, when you step on that pedal and moisture comes out of your foot pedal, remove that side filter, okay, just take some pliers, remove it, and then you put some WD-40 in there, just kind of make sure that there's no moisture in there or let it air out. But it's really important right now. We're dealing with humid weather. We're coming into hot months, and we need to drain our air compressor. You need to make sure that if you have this clear filter or this clear water separator on your system, there's an orange button you're going to push up, and it's going to release any moisture. If you have the black bowl, um, it's going to auto-relieve. And that's OK if it's auto-relieving. It's doing its job. 
but that should tell you something. You have moisture in your compressor. So make sure that you drain that compressor. If, it's, if you're in a high humid area, put a moisture separator on your compressor um, before that, that line comes into the pressure pot. This is your last line of defense, guys. So we wanna make sure that we take care of our equipment. You use WD-40 in your housing of your foot pedal um, if you have any moisture that got into your foot pedal. So it'll save you from getting a new one. I always want you to get new equipment, but if you can protect yourself for another year or two, use a WD-40. Okay, and we have John with us. Will there be another session next week? Yes, but I don't know what it is yet. I gotta think, I'm gonna look through the suggestions and see what it is. I have a lot of um, suggestions. I'm just not sure what I'm gonna bring you next week, but um, thank you. I'm so glad that you guys love, love doing this. Um, I see a question, white or silver rub and buff? Good question. Silver is what I've been using for photos or what we use for photos. Um, silver rub and buff. Don't put too much. A little at a time, work it in. I used to bring it into the classes and someone covered the whole plaque and it was like a mirror. So you want to make sure that you just use a little bit, rub it in, clean it up, and then just add more as you're going so you can see the best look um, image possible with that silver rub and buff. But thank you for joining us. Um, this is it for today. I made it to under an hour, record time to guys. So really appreciate you guys staying with us and keep the questions coming, keep the comments coming. And we thank you, Matias, for joining us. We thank you for all our dealers out there. We have Jeff from ProBlast in Australia, servicing Australia and New Zealand. And then we have Adam and Carl in United Kingdom, uh, the Glass Scribe. Uh, we have uh, the Glass Tattoo. We have so many out there. So take a look at our website. We, we really appreciate you guys. And don't forget to sub sub subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash sand carving. We'll see you next week.